and welcome back to another episode of the Credit Authority. Once again, I am your host, Rhonda Kolch, and I am so glad that you tuned in today. We always want to start our segment by thanking our sponsor, so thank you so much to Equity First. If you are experiencing credit and or financial challenges for yourself or for your business, feel free to reach out to any one of their trained professionals. They are bilingual nationwide and waiting for your call. They could be reached at 631 714 Four eight two two, as well as this week, we'd like to thank the Boss Network. If you are looking to network with a team of industry professionals, feel free to reach out to the Boss Network. They'd love to speak to you, figure out how together you can grow. And with that in mind, we have our next guest in studio. We are with Greg Gordon with Harvest Power. How are you? I'm doing great, Rhonda. How are you? Good. You know, so solar's a little sexy, right? But you I like guys, to think so. yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, we've spoken to other solar people in the past, right? And, you know, it's always interesting to me when I have the opportunity to speak with somebody in solar sales. But what I really want to speak about is you focus a little bit more on the commercial side than on the residential side. I myself do, but uh, our company does both residential as well as commercial. My focus is mainly on the commercial end. Which, by the way, for those listening, is a completely different completely animal. Completely different, yep. Right? It's Absolutely. like I get people that come in, they do commercial real estate versus residential. Commercial mortgage versus, you know, residential mortgages. So educate us a little bit. So if I'm listening and I am somebody who owns a building or a facility, anything that's commercial, and I'm looking at putting solar on, tell me what I'm looking at? What's in store for me? What kind of documents do I have to get you? What kind of time is it going to take? What kind of expense is involved? Yeah, it's 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 kind of, um, you know, what you said. is It's a different animal from the residential side of it. And, um, you know, our boss, who's the owner of the company, Carlo, Carlo Lanza, it takes a, a very consultative approach to it. Um, he actually, it's quite impressive when you go on some of these appointments with him because he'll actually quote tax law. He's taking classes on taxes and some of the ramifications and some of the things that are, uh, you know, going to result on the bottom line for some of these businesses. Um, so he's very comfortable speaking with CFOs, which are usually the ones that come in and and usually make the final decision to determine whether or not the ROI is, you know, those are the languages that they speak and he's very comfortable in doing that. Um, what, what's kind of unique about Harvest Power is that they started off as a construction uh, company years ago. It was a father and son business on Long Island. And then Carlo uh, Jr. took over in 2008 and just basically they were, it was kind of when the housing market was, was exploding and they were contractors. So they were migrating over to Seoul just as a, a temporary thing. And then it got to the point where they, it just kind of became its own animal. And, and here we are, you know, 15 years later, and it's just strictly a solar company. But the unique aspect of, of um, Harvest is that because they were builders and they have that background, they do everything. They do the, you know, the, the designs, the engineering, uh, the electric uh, electrical work, as well as the installs in the building, and we maintain them. So a lot of um, companies on Long Island and throughout the nation are, are guys that basically subcontract a lot of the stuff out, which is not what we do. And, you know, not to say funny, like, haha, but I know a handful of them as well. And, you know, they're always, you know, I feel like a lot of times they're fighting for the same client. Right. Mm-hmm. And because there's nothing unique, it's there's nothing that's making them stand out to their competition. But I'm sure when you are, you know, creating that entire piece of the puzzle for the client, you're probably also price effective, which makes wanting to go solar compared to somebody else more attractive. Absolutely. Um, you know, we like to look at it as as far as like, you know, on the commercial side, we look for big flat roofs where we can basically maximize the roof space. And we like to say that it's basically putting a tenant up on your roof for free. I mean, it's wasted space for the most part unless you're using it for, you know, uh, the, the only thing up there usually are mechanicals that we have to kind of work around. Uh, that's why the nature of New York City isn't always great for commercial um, solar because of the vertical nature of the buildings, but the outskirts and like the big, uh, you know, storage warehouses and things of that nature, uh, commercial industrial buildings are all uh, great, you know, opportunities for us. So those are the ones we kind of is our niche and we focus upon. Um, You know, there's a couple of different options with commercial solar. You can do net metering, which is basically um, offsetting your consumption. 
uh, each month. And basically after, um, you know, it's paid for, which the ROI on commercial in certain areas are usually anywhere from one to three years. Um, Long Island's a little longer, like probably three to five years. Uh, but after that, it becomes a revenue stream. So it's really, um, it, it's really a great asset for building owners to look into. And it become, you know, it obviously appreciates the value of the building as well. So from a consumer standpoint, I know that we hear about the fact that you could either lease the roof or you can purchase the panels. Is that similar in commercial or with commercial? Is it a purchase? Commercial, um, we strictly just do um, the purchasing of it. It's just a more simplified way to do it. Um, There are other options where they don't have to lay out any money. Um, It's called like a PPA where they would basically be leasing out their roof space to a third party and then they'll just really just get a check every quarter um it's not a tremendous amount of money but it's money that you know they don't own the system they don't have any responsibility for it so if that was uh you know something that they wanted to do we can certainly do that uh there's also something called community solar um those are usually for bigger size projects um, bigger roof spaces where they generate a lot of uh power and then what they do rather than offsetting their energy consumption bills uh, they basically just sell that energy out to the grid. And then there's subscribers like in the PSE&G area that will get a discounted rate, like the residential rates. Um, and then they would get you know money that way through, uh, through a third party. Is community solar something that you offer? We do, yes. And I've heard of that before. And the reason why I've heard of it is because my home, when I looked into putting solar on my roof, I was not a candidate. Okay. I should say I was a candidate if I decided to clear seventy, eighty thousand dollars worth of my trees, right? So okay. right. Uh, that yeah. would be a better yeah. way. So I was approached with the opportunity of doing community solar. Uh, we did not pull the trigger at that time. It was still a little confusing to me. I'm a uh, tangible person, right? Yeah. So, but I think it's a great option. So, are you saying that community solar is available for the consumer as well as the individual consumer as well as the business consumer? So, if you're not a candidate to put solar on your residential home, there are programs where you can get community solar, and basically, what that means is that it's it's solar that's generated through commercial properties, uh, other entities, and then it's sold back to the grid, and then they sell it to uh, people in those programs at a discounted rate. Uh-huh. So it's kind of a win-win for everybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're yeah. learning. <laughs> and then, and then you basically can lock in a rate. So it's, I mean, if you look at electric uh, rates over the last couple of years, it's gone up twenty percent. It's it's estimated to do the same again this year. So, you know, if you're in a position where you can lock in a rate, and it's it's you know a very advantageous thing. So just speaking for myself here. Sure. If I was interested in doing community solar as an option. Does somebody from Harvest Power come out, assess how much solar I need to purchase? Because I wouldn't know, right? If that makes sense, I wouldn't know how much I need. Correct. It it works similar to like what your PSE&G bill would be. Uh, Nothing really would change as far as, um, you know, the solar. It would just be a discounted rate on on your electricity bill. Huh. Application to fill out? Sure. (laughs) <laughs> I'll have some I'll have our people get in touch with your people yeah I think yeah. that that works as yeah, well absolutely tell me what your feeling is about solar farms I think I mean um it doesn't pencil out on Long Island because the real estate is so expensive but uh we've done some some major big ones up in like Maine uh some of the rural areas are it's very advantageous because the land is cheap and it, it really pencils out um so that's that's usually where you'll see them more up in like upstate New York in the rural areas um so yeah I mean it's it's if you have property that's you know not being utilized you might as well you know generate some revenue from is that it. something else that harvest power you know offers as a service we do we do we've we've done a couple up in um we've done one in saratoga which was a megawatt uh, good size system and they they've, they're currently working on a couple in maine um so yeah absolutely and i only say that because i do have residents upstate new york as well so while okay. i'm driving on i-90 and i-87 and i'm through some of these back roads you do see some of these solar farms oh absolutely and i feel like a lot of you know people are taking advantage exactly what you're saying of buying land cheap and then building the solar farm yeah one thing you have to consider is 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 the interconnections and stuff like that like connecting to the grid uh could be a challenge in those areas uh sometimes you have to build trenches that could be a couple of miles wrong and and that you know, can blow up the margins as far as, you know, whether or not it makes economic sense. But, 
Yeah, it pencils out uh, up in those areas a lot. So we got uh, commercial solar for you, uh, um, community solar for you, and then maybe a, a solar farm. Uh, you up never know. State, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. So if you are listening to today's show and you have been trying to figure out whether or not solar is for you, you've delayed on looking into solar, you finally have decided to purchase your first home and you didn't realize your PSE and G bill was going to be so high, or you're just looking for some additional alternatives, I encourage that you reach out to our friends over at Harvest Power. Uh, They are conveniently located on Sunrise Highway in Islip Terrace. And Greg, how do they get in touch with you or somebody in the office? Uh, Yeah, definitely just, uh, you know, I don't want to give my cell phone number out. The office line is fine. The office line, it should be on there. It's... uh, uh, yeah, you can call the office. They can. The commercial people will put you in touch with myself uh, or, you know, the residential team will take over and, and gladly answer any questions that you could have. I love it. So once again, we are speaking with Greg Gordon with Harvest Power. Until next time, stay tuned. We're getting ready to bring on our final guest.